Great Britain against Australia in the 2004 Tri-Nations final. And Russell Smith, the man in the middle. The man who will be under the most spotlight, of course, because for the first time we have not got a neutral referee. It is a big night for him, but he'll be confident. He's been there, done that. He's the most experienced one that we have and let's in hope this we're country. not talking about him, Steve, which means he's had a great game. Yeah, well, he has a tendency to do that. He's uh, not flamboyant, let's put it that way. But interesting, you know, a little bit of uh, spice thrown into this is the fact that the Australians, they were stunned when Andy Farrell was awarded the Golden Boot as the best. And they were also stunned that Brian Noble picked up the best coach of the year. Here we go then, Russell Smith blows the whistle, the last game of 2004, the biggest game of 2004, can Britain produce? That's a great rush from the kickoff, led by Tony Carroll and Shane Webke as they pull Paul Wellens down, a big hit on Adrian Morley. They were waiting for him, they lined him up, three of them. Here now is Sean Long, will try and give Britain width, but harassed by Andrew Ryan. Terry Newton will find his captain, Farrell. And this is a good set of six defensively from the Ossies so far. Britain still deep inside their own half of the field. Scott with the kick early in the tackle count. But again, straight down the throat of Minicello. That has been the blight of this series from a Great Britain point of view. A poor kick there by the Great Britain skipper, and they know it. The biggest problem they have. Oh, oh got over the top. He went right over there, did Morley. What a big hit this was. Boom, straight over the top. Could have been penalised. It looked to me as though he used the knees. They got away with it. And this is Reardon for Great Britain. They were trying to push him over the line. Here is Long. He finds Farrell, who stooped. This now is Harris. Oh, a knock on, a little fumble. And uh, Jamie Peacock couldn't take the pass in. Well, they got in each other's way. Need a little dummy run, and there you can see it. Too many cooks spoiling the broth. Nervous times for both sides, but Brian Noble really has to get this message out to the kickers on the Great Britain side that keep it low. At least they could come up with a fumble, but when it goes down the throat, as we've, we've already seen. This is Willie Tonga, and here comes Webke. And that was a fierce challenge on him by Stuart Fielder. And Terry Newton was there as well for good measure. Baderas, oh, lovely dummy. And he's away from two and a great pass to Webke. And Webke, well, he might have the knee heavily strapped. He might have had a fitness test immediately before the kickoff, but he looks as though he's going to give at least 20 minutes. This is Kimoli. Got to keep an eye on him. Oh, and that silly play. That really is. Well, that's a gift, two points. You know, before the season started, Brian Noble had a little word in Terry Newton's ear and said, look, you are a quality international player, but there are times when you just do the most stupid things, and he has done that. We have got to be 100%, and straight away, what has he done? He's gone, hello, Mr. Smith, I'm doubting you. That was the captain. I think Andrew Farrell was leading the chorus then. And so... Russell Smith would not take it any longer and marched them 10 metres further back, which now means, Ian Millwood, it isn't a possible two points, it's a certainty. Well, it's definitely two, and uh, we talk about the emotion of the game, and this is where I was saying earlier, all these guys who have played for Great Britain have played in Challenge Cup, Super League Grand Finals, World Club, and wasn't smart by Terry, let the emotion get the better of him. Interesting, through the whole series, the completion rate of controlling the ball has been outstanding by all three teams. And both teams have come up with errors early. So it just shows you what's at stake and the anxiety. It's Lockyer then with the first kick of the match and it's bang in front. And this will be 2-0 Australia unless there's something goes drastically wrong. And 2-0 it is. Down Lockyer's boot. And already, Terry Newton with the penalty. Andy Farrell with the back chat. Russell Smith with the extra 10 metres. And Australia with the points. Three errors, Eddie, that we can... He'll afford. One was a poor kick right down the throat of the full-back. Gave Australia the momentum to get into a position. And then, silly play from Newton. And, of all people, Andy Farrell just couldn't keep his mouth shut. Deep kick-off from Farrell, and here comes Petro Sivanasiva. 
Good tackle low down by Fielder. Newton hounding from Marker. That's great defence from Newton and Farrell. There was no way for Webke to go through them then. And here now is Tony Carroll. Long low down. Senior round at the ball and at the ball carrier. Nathan Hindmarsh now for Australia. Arguably their man of the series has been in incredible form the second row. Certainly has, but good defence by Great Britain. They are really getting out of the traps very early. Brett Kimorley with the kick. Bit of a difference there, isn't it? That has found. It's found the ground, but it's also found Brian Carney. And Carney is pushed a couple of metres back towards his own line. Because every time there is anything going on around the ruck, around the play of the ball, Russell Smith will be under pressure from this sellout crowd to give a penalty for Great Britain. Here goes Gleeson. Great step from Martin Gleeson. This Tri Nation series has certainly rescued this young man here. Newton, long, Britain lined up out wide here. It's with Senior, and Senior couldn't get the ball away. Berrigan got to him, so too did Matt Singh. Well, he sucked in Matt Singh there from the whitewash, really should have offloaded to his winger, Stuart Reardon. He'd done everything right at the big centre, Senior. This is the last tackle. We'll expect the kick from Long, and that will almost find Russell Smith. Oh, and it's just evaded Paul Wellens. Oh, that was an inventive kick. Arguably the best kick we've seen of the Tri-Nations from Britain. Well, this time we hit space, and we're a chance of getting it there, Eddie. Can I just stoke the fire up of the people of the older generation when we look at Gleeson and Carney? Gee, they people would say they remind them of Eric Ashton and Billy Boston in the 60s. And Gleeson and Carney could create that in years to come because they're both only young. Yes, they are. The ball went backwards then, and they're allowed to play on. And here comes the flying winger, Maxine. And he has got Fielder to get past. And Fielder made sure he didn't get past him. But Fielder has hurt himself in the process. What a great tackle from a prop forward. Chugging across. Knew that he had the angle. What a wonderful cover tackle on this fella, Matt Singh. But it just shows you the importance that Great Britain have to make sure that they do come back on that second phase in defence because the Australians do have plenty of pace here. And you know the good thing too, Eddie, already that's uh, come in the game, sorry, Steve-O, is the teams are both prepared when they've got space to offload the ball and see the space and take advantage of it. But when early in the game, it's important when you're playing, you want the bloke inside and outside, you've got to know how tough he's going to be. Field and early forced an error on Rooney with a tough tackle. Now he's come up with another tough play. This is Justin Harris. Oh, that was high. No whistle from Russell Smith. Well, that was round the neck of Justin Harris, and that's not being... Uh, one-eyed and nationalistic. Well, it certainly was. Them. It was a grab more than anything. That's probably why the reason Russell Smith has given them the benefit of the doubt. But really, Great Britain should have been another 40 metres downfield. Great offload. And here's Harris. Bounces off two, bounces off three. Gets the ball away. A little untidily and another knock on. This time by Adrian Morley. Sibonisiba has it. And it goes via Andrew Ryan into the arms of Brett Kimorley. Not the best tactics there. Justin Harris really should not have been trying to offload there. It's with Nathan Hindmarsh now for Australia. They're trying to make progress inside the British half of the field. Midway inside that half they are now. And here is Lockyer. That's a great ball. They have two on one. It's a lovely chip down the line. Berrigan's after it. Oh, and that is a wonderful try for Australia. And it's scored by Matt Singh. The referee has not given it yet. He wants to check the onside. But it was a fantastic kick. And they allowed Lockyer to run. And once they allow Lockyer to run, there are problems. And he's oh, a mile onside. Beautiful kick there. He's onside all right. And it all came about by that silly error. Justin Harris trying to keep the ball alive when really they should have just been slowing things down. There'll be no point. It'll be GRY this one. And they'll be devastated. The crowd won't like this, but it is wonderful attacking play by the Australians. They caught Great Britain. They went for the kick early, and it was a good kick. And the try is given. He was looking, actually, there are, but on two screens here. That's the one he should be looking at. There's another one in this corner that all the way through that was saying try on it. But uh, Russell Smith gets the nod, so does Matt Singh. 
and Australia race into a six-point lead and that was a great rugby league try. Certainly was. This is the incident where they should have shut it down. If you're being harassed like that and then you come up with an error, they'll make you pay. Look at this beautiful. Tonga the kick through. Singh takes it. That is a superb T.R.Y. They'll make you pay, will these green and gold guys? Lockyer to add the extras. He sweeps the ball over the bar. Fantastic kick from Lockyer. It's 8-0 to Australia. When the chips are down, the green and gold start to play. Matt Singh. He's fended off the challenge of Brent Tate for his place in this final. And the man from the North Queensland Cowboys has certainly repaid the faith of his coach. Australia ahead by eight points to nil. The crowd is stunned, Ian Milward. Well, they're stunned because they haven't come up with this many errors so early in the whole tournament, and they've made them play Australia. It's also, it's very nice with both teams' defence, very tight and compressed, and maybe the spacing on the edge could be a little bit wider because a one pass is eliminating two or three defenders, and that's why we're seeing a few breaks on the edge of the rucks. Well, for the fourth match in a row, Great Britain now have to come from behind if they are to win this. And this is Tony Carroll. He got through long almost. He couldn't get away from Farrell. Was slammed into the turf on the third tackle. And it's with Kimali. He finds Sivanasiva. Four tackles gone. They're still inside their own half, Australia. But Kimali, with his kick, will get them down the other end. Long was after him. The ball bounces kindly for Reardon. It's an enthusiastic chase again, though, from the Australians. Beautiful. Led by Badiris. What a wonderful chase by the hooker there, Danny Badiris. He Great really... offload from Carney. Farrell will try and punch a hole. Oh, the oh what a hedge! Petro Sivanasiva with the tackle on Andy Farrell. Oh, that shook the Great Britain captain up, I can assure you that. Sivanasiva gave it everything. Boom! Newton gets the ball away to Skullthorpe. Oh, and he was leading with the elbow there, Skullthorpe and Sivanasiva leads the protest. Brett Kimorley looks at Russell Smith, there's no penalty forthcoming. And this is Newton, he gets to the ground on the last, just over the halfway line. Justin Harris waits at dummy half. And that's Wellens with the kick. But again, Minicello gobbles it up. And back come the Australians courtesy of the fullback but a good chase by the kicker Wellens do you know Eddie I, I hate having to repeat myself but how many games do we have to sort this out well we've got this is the last chance I, I mean I, I can't believe it that, that, that we've two straight down their throat all it needs is to keep it low get a good field position apply the pressure and force Australia into the error we're not doing that look Australia already they're over the halfway line and they're in possession here with Lockheed who gets it away to Minicello. And two tackles are missed on the fullback. Three tackles are missed on the fullback. It's with Lockyer. And Farrell takes them on. A great offload to Badiris. And again to Minicello. Sensational stuff this. Badiris and Reardon brings him to the ground on the last. Try saver. It was Berrigan. And here now is Lockyer. Oh, Minicello's in. Australia's second try. Minicello's in. Screams of a forward from the terraces, but no decision coming from touch judge and referee. The second try for Australia, they lead 12-0. Sensational stuff. But you've got to put it down to the fact that they had the roll on Australia. You know why? Because we kicked straight down their throat. The pullback was running at pace. On the second tackle, they were already in the Great Britain half. This is absolutely sensational. It doesn't come much better than this. Good work by Reardon, but they're always going to be in sort of trouble. Look at them coming back. Too enthusiastic. You can see there, Peacock had run across. They lost the shape. And Lockyer knew it. Nothing wrong with that pass at all. Superb offload. Look at that. Can you see how the cover defense has come across? It's just sheer speed desperation you've got to sort out your defense but you've got to say Eddie that was nothing short of sensational one of the great international tries you will see for many many a day Lockyer doesn't miss those and Australia have
shot into a 14-0 lead. Eddie, uh, Steve, are you talking about defence there? The reason it was going sideways is because they broke them. They need to come forward because Minicillo and them will sniff on the inside of Kamali. The forward movement is the big thing. Look, you can come up with a game plan, you can come up with the best players, but at the end of the day, if you don't come up with field position and you don't come up with a kicking game, you're always going to start on the on the defensive, and that's what's happened to Great Britain. Attacking-wise, they both look at if they get opportunities, they're going to give real a shot at each other. At the moment, field position and kicking game is vital for Great Britain to get back into it. Certainly is, in it and you well know it, being a coach yourself, is that, look, field position, if you can get over the opposition halfway line in the first and second tackle, you're in control of this game. Seven receiver plays the ball. And, uh, well, Great Britain, 14 points down in 14 minutes, and we thought that uh, the likes of Webke and maybe still to come off the bench, worryingly, a Craig Wing, struggling just a little bit, and Lockyer, of course, with his ribs. But, uh, hey, it doesn't seem to matter at the moment. 14-0, the Australians lead when Kimorley, another good kick. Look, it goes in between the winger and the fullback. It will stand in the in-goal area. And Reardon has to run it back, and he gets as far as Berrigan, three metres from the line. Senior waits at dummy half. It's not over yet for Great Britain, but they have to get this sorted. They have to... Well, they have to score next, no question. Carney. Pretty solid defence, they really are fired up, Australia, not surprising, look at that scoreline early in this game, 14-0, it is going to be a big, big question for this Great Britain side, they've really got to just go back down to basics, they've come up with errors, they've come up with back chatting to the referee, just losing their composure. That's a better kick. And an ironic cheer from... The majority of the Great Britain fans in the stands here at Ellen Road. And it came from Yestin Harris, but he is still able to work the ball forward. It was the winger Matt Singh. And no way through for Luke Rooney, and that was Morley who brought him to ground. The biggest problem Great Britain have had so far is that they haven't had any opportunity to force the pressure on Australia. And they've had no penalties either, as of course, you've seen. But their, marsh. their field position has been poor, and you put that down to the fact that it's poor kicking. Kim Orley flicks the pass. Badiris, great hands, Hindmarsh. And again, Lockyer scintillating. Tony Carroll, Berrigan, one-handed he took that. He goes between the two of them, Farrell and Reardon. It's the last tackle here for Australia. Tony Carroll, Lockyer, and Lockyer will float the kick. It's a belter. There are two after this. Carney doesn't get it. It's a try. It's a try for Willie Tonga. He plucked that out of the air like he was picking cherries off a tree. And Willie Tonga has scored from the kick from Lockyer. And Lockyer and Kimori are weaving their magic again. He'll check for the onside, and he's well and truly onside there. What a wonderful way to kick there by Darren Lockyer, the skipper. Carney went early, he's on the way down by the time that Tonga is snatching it. No doubt about plunking the ball down. This is becoming a riot. Oh, TRY, this is going to be, Ian, no doubt about it. It'll come with We're stunned. <laughs> This crowd here, capacity crowd at Ellen Road. Here it comes, confirmation. Steve, any drop, any kick is only going to be as good as the lack of pressure on it. In Hodge, when Great Britain kick, there's pressure. For Australia kick, Kamali and Lockyer have got no pressure. So their, their vision where they want to kick it, but the chasers know where it's going to go. Pressure's key on a kick. And not only that, look, is there anybody there to help? No. Martin Gleeson was taken out, he looks in absolutely disgust, but you've got to make sure that you're big and strong. You put your weight in there. Tonga went for it. Carney just set off a little bit too early, but there was no protection for Carney. Well, it's 1997 at Ellen Road being revisited here. Lockyer with this conversion, and that's another, and the Australians have a 20-point lead. And it's just as it was in 1997. They were home and hosed by half time, the Aussies. 25 points to two, I think it was, at the break in 1997. Could be even worse in 2004. This is a one heck of a disappointment. It certainly is at the, this point in time, but let, let's not panic yet. 
we've had very little opportunity. We've got to make sure that we get that good field position. You know, this reminds me, remember when Australia took on New Zealand down in London? New Zealand went in at half time, and then New Zealand came out for that second. Oh, interception long. The ball was flung away. Quick play the ball. Newton. Here is Keith Senior. If Britain could buy a try now, they mortgage themselves. Farrell. First time Great Britain have threatened the Australian line in the 18th minute. And it's with Long. And Long gets the pass away to Harris, who in turn finds Jamie Peacock. Peacock will dump it over the top, but Harris, they've gone backwards, there's no way through. They've gone back a metre after three tackles. And here is Wellens. The Australians scintillating in defence, and then uh, in attack, rather. They're now muscling up in defence. It's with Sean Long, finds Farrell, flicks the pass, and that's the last tackle, they're 20 metres away. Harris, there's the kick, Minicello again gobbles it up and says thanks very much. Christmas has come early for the Aussie fullback. Well, it's another throat lozenge, isn't it? There'll be no croaky voices in this Australian side. Because we just keep putting it down their throat all the time. Getting, getting back to that point, Ian, what I'm saying is the fact, remember, when they took, they came out second half, New Zealand, uh, and they thought they had the game under control. Australia had the ball for 17 minutes out of the first 18. Just completely blanked New Zealand, and they've done exactly the same, Ian, to Great Britain. I've got to find out there's a magnet on Minicello's chest, because it just <laughs> seems to zero in on there, doesn't it? The kick from uh, Kimorley bounces off the knees of Wellens. Kimorley leading the charge, gets the fullback. He's finished off by Hindmarsh. Gray, uh, Shane Webke looks a little bit unwell, so it looks like uh, Big Willie Mason will come back on. And here now is Brian Carney. Well, if there's any guy out there in the Great Britain side that can really just turn it around, it is Brian Carney. Newton, great ball! Wellens! But there was a man there to bring him down, it was Kimorley. This is Reardon, Skullthorpe, Harris, great ball back on the inside, and Gleeson. Superstar, that's better. First penalty for Great Britain. Get it into the corner, don't bother with the two, we need possession, they've gone for the quick tap. And they're running it as they must, with Peacock. It's with Newton now. He's looking for long, the ball bounces back, is it going to be six to go? No, the referee hasn't wiped the tackle count down, so Fielden runs it on. That's the second, he says. Newton will attack the line! And Australia keep him out. It's Keith Senior at dummy half this time. Senior finds Farrell. And Farrell taking them on! Four tackles gone, long at dummy half. Here is Harris. Harris! Flicks the ball away dangerously, it's picked up by Ryan Bailey. And Bailey wants to get on with it quickly and does, Skullthorpe, Carney, no way through. That's the turnover. They went for the power play, but that will build in the confidence. They haven't had much of a sniff at this football, and that really will just lift them. They needed something. I know at 20 to nil, you're going to say you can't panic. Oh, he's going to give a penalty. Interference. Smith and he marches Great Britain back 10 metres again. Well, Brian Norman's got to get the message out here and say, hey, come on, give them all a gobstopper. Fill their mouth with something. Oh, and they haven't found touch, Carney. As you watch that, Carney flipped the ball back and has picked it up himself and will run back at the Australian. And gets the ball away. Bailey. Well, well, Britain have just got to settle down for a moment. One release! And Brian Noble has got Take to get off. the message out to the players. Shut up. They mustn't talk back to the referee. And the problem is, of course, he's a British referee and all that the pressure that that brings. Reardon has lost it, gone without it. Well, the referee doesn't drop the ball, the referee doesn't miss a tackle. The biggest problem we also have, apart from that defensive uh, frailty that Great Britain have shown in this first half, is that we're doing a lot of width but we're not going much penetration. It may look pretty, but it's not effective. Mason spins and passes the ball to Hindmarsh. And Hindmarsh keeps going, gets over the 40-metre line. It takes three to bring him down. 
And Badiris waits. This is Willie Mason. And Mason stands and turns and spins. Finds Kimoli, finds Lockyer. He goes back and finds Willie Tonga. And Tonga is brought to ground by Martin Gleeson and Paul Johnson. Brian Noble is making the changes, looking for the correct formula. Here now is Marco Mealy. And Marco Mealy still going to within 10 metres of the line on the fourth tackle. It's with Kimoli, it's with Lockyer. He finds Berrigan. And Berrigan, a beautiful ball to Minicello. It's a try for Minicello. It looks like curtains for Great Britain. And every time the Aussies attack, they have a way of getting through the British defence. Good work in and around the play, the ball area. Taking it one way, then switching it back, confusing the British defence. And they did it later in the phase. It has been superb approach play by Australia. It's a green and goal at their best. Look at this. Watch for the switch back on the inside. Look how we're hesitating. We're not getting into their face. Good positioning by Russell Smith. Looks to the touch judges. A-OK. -okay. It's another T-R-Y. But the ease in which they are switching this ball around. Wellens couldn't stop that. They are just dragging this British defence from one side to the other. And it is oh so easy. And if you're a British fan, it's oh so sad. Take nothing away from this guy. He knows exactly when to penetrate into the three-quarter line. And it's try number two for the fullback. And Lockyer in front of the sticks. It's 26 points to nil. Well, there is like somebody has moved in here to Ellen Road tonight and has just taken the air out of every British balloon. There you see the defensive line. They're going out to the left, hesitating, hanging back. Watch when the switch comes. Anybody moving forward, gents? No. Let's see what they're going to do. I know what they're going to do. They plug the ball underneath the sticks and Australia are having the time of their life. I think we spoke about that, Steve, didn't we? That if you go sideways, Minichillo will always come back on your inside and beat you. Not only because you're going sideways, because of his speed and also his evasion. You know, you want to give a team the ball back as far down the field as you can. And Great Britain continually are giving the ball back to them inside their half. When was the last time Australia made an error in this game? It was early in the first set on the halfway. So, you know, first of all, we've got to get control right, then kicking game. Because with the ball, you know, they're going to match him, but they're going to have to make some... Oh, here we go again. This is Lockyer. Lockyer is on his own. Lockyer has got the speed to get round Wellens, and Lockyer's momentum will take him over the line. And that's another Australian try. They're celebrating. Russell Smith wants it confirmed by the video referee. But I think Lockyer's momentum took him over the line. No doubt about it. Never lost it. That's another try. It was already down, even though he gets a second bite at it. Never losing it. Full movement. It's Carney that brings him over. It's down this, there anyway. Yeah, this will be T.R.Y. No doubt about it. He just wanted to make sure, did the official. But Lockyer just breezed through confirmation yet again. And the crowd here are just shaking their head in total disbelief. Well, I think we all are, and our viewers at home will be. Where is the, the British performance that we expected? And to be fair, you have to take your hat off to the Australians. They are playing magnificently. But the, the faces on the terraces tell their own story. And when you poke a stick at this Australian side and you beat them, you beat them at your peril. Well, he's been criticised, Wayne Bennett, for sticking with the players during the tournament. They didn't play hit what people perceive up the scratch. And when, with the missing link, which is Lockyer, in and controlling things, everything's around him, everyone's gone up a gear, and they are playing extremely well and verifying Bennett's selection. Five tries for Australia, and each one of them so far converted by this man, Darren Lockyer. And there's another six tries, six conversions. Darren Lockyer is only one man. They say one man doesn't make a team, but Lockyer makes or breaks 
the Kangaroos. Down to Chris, he's got some injury news from the Kangaroos. Well, I guess, Eddie, when the points are coming this easily, you don't need your leading try scorer out there. But uh, Luke Rooney, he's been off the field now for about 10 minutes. He's been in the dressing room. They are assessing him. They will probably wait until halftime to see if he does return. He copped a heavy head, head knock. He wasn't quite sure if he was uh, in Leeds or London. Uh, so he will may, maybe may not take a further part in this game. Another man that copped a very heavy blow was Shane Webke. Now, he came from the field, but it wasn't his knee that was troubling him. He just wasn't quite sure where he was as well. And they forced him to get on the uh, the cycle down here on the sideline. So his knee's keeping warm, but he's uh, slowly coming around. So Webke will play on. We're still not quite sure about Luke Rooney. Hindmarsh plays the ball to Badiris, and he gets it away, and uh, he finds it Marco Mealy. The thing that worries me, Eddie, is when will Wayne Bennett throw Craig Wing out there? He's out there, Steve. Yeah, but I mean, sort of, I mean, to put him into dummy half and start running through is still using Danny Badiris at the play the ball area. Look at that magnificent kick again. It just bounced a couple of times, stood up in the in-goal area, made Great Britain move the ball away from their own line. And look at this defence. You think he would be 2-0 to Australia at the moment, not 32. Yeah. yeah. Come. Looks like there's a problem for Tony Carroll. He went down awkward. He is gingerly tripped, getting back into the line of defence. There you saw him at the bottom of your screen. Well, we've been across this road so many times before, Steve-O, haven't we? We've uh, Sadly. come to a decider, and uh, this is a Tri-Nations final. Oh, know we're, ju we're just not competing. Well, we've come in the past, and we've had great hope and great belief, and well, look, uh, I, I, it's all come tumbling down, but never as early as the first half hour. Look, I have been, I've come under a lot of criticism, criticism throughout this Tri-Nations because they keep saying, oh, surely, Steve-O, the Great Britain kicking isn't all that bad. Well, I rest my case. Ian Millwood? Well, you know what? I've tried to stick Ready? up to the players during the series and try to be Andy you a bit there, Steve. But I've got to put my hand up with you there. Do you realise when you play young and, you know, when your mum and dad take your game, they say everyone's going to get a kick? We've had five English players have a kick in this game so far. So who's going to be the six? And that probably reflects the lack of confidence of where to put the ball to create pressure. A rare mistake from Australia. They fumbled it there. As they were trying to get up and play the ball, so Britain will have head and feet at the scrum. Well, we can talk about the kicking game, but the scoreboard 32 says the defence is oh, a real a, strong either. No, it's not strong, but take nothing away from the green and goals. Some of their approach for those tries were just superb. Sheer quality. Absolutely. And here is Morley. Hands up two, quick left. It's Harris, and he finds Danny Maguire. Maguire, a little half break, almost through, but halted by the dealers, no melee. Yeah, he went for a second try on that one. Silly play, and he knows it too. Now, I'm sure that Brian Noble, when he sent out Danny Maguire, no doubt about the penalty, when he said to uh, Maguire, look, go out there and enjoy yourself. You've got nothing to lose. Take them on, ask the questions, attack their defensive line. I bet you Marco merely just said to Danny Maguire, look, mate, you've got more of this to come on February the 4th because the Bulldogs and Marco Mealy will be back here for the World Club Challenge. Here is Maguire. He finds Senior. It's with Wellens at dummy half. Now skull four. Oh, and he just managed to get to that pass from Paul Skullfall, Denvid Morley. This is Harris. And Harris can't get through the defence of Nathan Hindmarsh. Terry Newton. Newton. Wonderful defence on Danny Maguire. Andy Farrell on the last. Stabs the kick in. And we get a set of six again because Minicello couldn't get out of the in-goal area. Paul Scottbob saw to that. Good option. Hit the ground as well. Ricocheted all over it. Good position though by this fella. Two try hero for the Australians so far, but Minicello's impressed me. And I think that white shot of the crowd tells its own story. They're stunned. They have had little to cheer about. Just had not the field position. They haven't had the possession. They've come up with the errors and they've missed far too many tackles. High hanging kick. And again. And as Harris got that ball, the tackler, Andrew Ryan, was 
three metres away from him because the chase from the dropout underneath the sticks was sensational. You know, my mind goes back to the 2000 World Cup. Australia, they, they fiddled and faddled their way to the final and then they produced the goods on the day against New Zealand. Australia in this Tri-Nations, they haven't exactly fiddled and faddled, but they've got to the final. And where has this form been throughout the course? Do they only come to play one game? Well, to be fair, Eddie, Wayne Bennett, their coach, made it quite clear that uh, there was a lot of improvement. And boy, <laughs> we've seen that tonight. And the word will be out from Bennett. It's another ball game now. You've got to make sure that that try line stays uncrossed. And that's he goes down on the tackle, the last one. Johnson. We're desperate for a score here. We need it. Crossfield kick, senior, bounces, and straight into the arms of the green and gold jersey that belongs to Matt Singh. Well, he went early to Matt Singh and then somehow finished up with the football. Oh, that's dangerous. Silly play, that. Again, again, we put them under pressure. We get them in a good position. What do we do? We give away a silly penalty. They have only themselves to blame. You are not allowed to do that. You cannot put the hands inside the leg and lift them up. Uh, not surprisingly, the substitute Craig Fitzgibbon is none too impressed. If you look at the completion rates in the game at the moment, I know Great Britain's is very low, but I think they've had, what, 54% of the ball, ball come up there, Australia, 46. That's not a great big difference if, if you're playing well. The little things in the game, penalties like that, like Terry Newton, like kicking game, dropping the ball, all little things we, we talk about make up the big concept of being poor. We now play thoroughly here at the moment by a more professional and more ruthless that attitude by Australia. You've just seen the stats pop up there. I mean, it's just this sort of business. The way that they offload, the way the ball sticks, the way these forwards run and harass. Well, not only that, he's still moving there, yeah. Willie Mason. He, he got through two, and that didn't mean Morley to pull him down. When the Amelia unloads. This is wing now for two. Australia Back when they are moving the ball our defense is, is standing back. back look they take two strides and then they wait what are the Aussies going to do you've got to get into their faces you've got to you've got to peel the skin back you've got to show the blood it's Kimoli and it's Lockyer oh it's a brilliant pass and Ryan steps away from one and there is another Australian try on the far side from Willie Tonga again what a cut out across the line and um, kindly I suppose but they're showing their disappointment the British supporters they're booing they're booing the British side now but they've had you have to stand up and you have to applaud this green and gold machine it's basic rugby league football they get them still past though Steve look at that from Lockyer he's oh. world class he's world class but the defence wasn't I, I got it, had to, it had to be finished as well. I got to back Stibo up there. There was numbers on the outside, so your spacing and people numbing up the inside was very poor. You know, you talk about where has this come from Australia. I think that what every Great Britain fan is the point here at the moment is Australia's improved. Fair enough, that's okay. You can't control that. What you can control is how you play, and they're going backwards here tonight, Great Britain. They aren't showing the form they showed during the tournament. They're the best team, and that's why the players and the fans are disappointed. Not the way Australia's beat them. Well, Lockyer is taking a breather from the goal kicking, and uh, that means that Craig Fitzgibbon will have a bash. And I'll tell you something: this fellow isn't a bad number two goal kicker. And they, they are bemused. The British players, they're bothered, they're bewildered, they're totally and completely bemused. And look at this! Look at this! Fitzgibbon adds the extras, 38 points to nil. Well, I think whispering quietly, but the Tri Nations Trophy might be going 12,000 miles away. And I have to travel those <laughs> miles yet again and have to face the wonderful Australian public who they've always welcomed me back there. Well, you won't be travelling quickly, I know you. That is for sure. <laughs> I won't be rushing back for this one. I mean, it really has been devastating what these Australians have done. But if you allow them to run, They'll cut you to pieces, and they've done just that. But they've gone through the basics. You know, when the forwards are going, they look they look a lot more enthusiastic. They're attracting two, three, sometimes four would-be tacklers, 
quick play of the ball, what happens? Our defence out wide is completely out of sync. Kimorley flicks the pass, Willie Mason hit that at pace. Almost took Morley with him, and uh, Farrell had to come in and help out to bring him down. There is Craig Wing. This is Kimorley again, and Lockyer. Brilliant kick. Brilliant kick. Carney does well, though, but he's got work to do. And he does it. But look at the chase. He got through three and four then, and there were four waiting for him. And including those four is a prop forward, Shane Redkey. And the Australian camp realised he's not 100%. And what about the task that the Great Britain players were supposed to apply the pressure to Darren Lockyer to get into his ribs? They've hardly got chance to touch his head, never mind his ribs. You talk about how good the Australian support and attack is, it's the initial contact of the Great Britain defence is poor, so other people have got to solve it, and it's so untidy. The kick from Harris is in the air. <laughs> well, it bounces, but it bounces very kindly, as it turns out. But you make your own luck, don't you? You certainly do. He's, uh, he reads it well, Eddie. He, he's well, a, he's a great full-back, but he was on the wing in all three Ashes tests last year, you know. I know, but he, he reads the game well, positions himself. He is, I think I'm right in saying he's full-back of the year, isn't he, in, uh, in the NRL? Well, Great Britain will want to get into the dressing room and uh, <laughs> Ryan Noble has had to come up with a couple of big speeches in this tournament. Uh, at 38-0, maybe worse to come. If he gets the man of jail tonight, he will have earned this call. That's better. Willie Tonga over the line, courtesy of Carney and Gleeson. Combined well, make sure that they get the ball carrying arm from rush in the deck good stuff trouble is there hasn't been enough of that and they know it last week of course against uh, New Zealand Brian Carney and uh, Martin Gleeson their combination was just absolutely electric but they've just had little opportunity they've had most of the time having to work on a defensive pattern inside the last minute of the first half I think it would be safe to say Eddie that we've actually launched no more than three would-be attempts at the Australian line throughout 40 minutes of rugby league football. Sean Lockton, Bailey. Gets Britain almost to halfway, but it's uh, four tackles gone. O'Loughlin gets the pass away, Scofford. Last tackle for Great Britain. Here's Harris. Gives it to Maguire. And Maguire finds Senior. And Senior's kick actually eludes Minicello. Maguire's after it. And Maguire did well. There's the half time siren. Australia ahead by 38 points to nil. There is huge disappointment in this crowd. And just listen to this Great Britain trailed 34 points to nil at half time when they travelled to Sydney in July 2002. And the scoreline at the end of that day was Australia 64, Great Britain 10. An eminently forgettable 40 minutes for the British Lions. But the Kangaroos, absolutely magnificent. Some sensational play. And they lead at the break by 38 points to nil. And he had a great start to the week, being named the World Player of the Year, winning the Golden Boot on Monday. Only Ellery Hanley in 1989 won the award from the British game previously. But the uh, world champions, David Waite there, we spoke to him, and alongside him, or just in the row in front, of the great Alex Murphy. But uh, David Waite sitting there, just masked by one of the people making their way to the seats for the second half. David Waite. Though Australian, a little bit like Ian Millwood, who's with us here tonight. Though Australian, totally devastated and disappointment, disappointed by what he has seen, I'm sure. Well, it's a case of we built the house, the foundation has been good, and it looked all so pretty, didn't it? But when it came, Mr. Pig turned up. Yeah, didn't blow it down, did he? Oh, Mr. Wolf, wasn't he? 
<laughs> the pigs were inside, uh, but uh, either way, we have been blown away. I said at half time that the only thing remaining for the Great Britain side is respect and pride. We need to salvage something out of the next 40 minutes. Short kickoff, and uh, well, even that came to north for Great Britain. Mind you, they have got the knock on. I thought for a moment that it was Wellens who got to it, and it was. Well, pretty fortunate there. Great Britain ruled the knock on against the Australians. Here is Gleeson. And he finds Wellens, but uh, Berrigan was all round his back. Far too often, Great Britain, when they are offloading, it's been a very, very flat pass. It's been a panic move. It has. We, we don't seem to have sorted ourselves out in, re in relation to any second phase. We haven't utilised a dummy runner. We haven't had the opportunity, but we've got to change it. Here's Harris. He helps it on to O'Loughlin, who finds Paul Johnson, who has gone without it. And Kim Morley has it back for Australia inside his own quarter. Well, a great tackle, though, wasn't it, from Brett Kimorley? Typical example of uh, making sure that the shoulder just hits the ball-carrying arm. Just looking along the, the British line, there are some big names missing, I think, in the well, it looks like half. I don't think Scopethorpe's there. There's a penalty to Australia, stolen, the ball stolen. Sean Long is off, too. Scopethorpe not there and Long not there, is that right? Yep. And I don't think Fielden has made the second half either. And I think I saw Jamie Peacock with the coat on in the dressing room also. So there are some big names missing. Peacock's there, Long's there, got the coat on on the side. Here's Webke, he continues on, despite the fact that that knee was apparently giving him some trouble before the match. Uh, Britain being caned in the penalty department, 6-2, by English referee Russell Smith. Could have been another one there, to be fair, O'Mealy taking a bit of a facial, here is Kimoli, and here is Ryan. He's had a big game as his second row, Ryan. This is beautiful, Tony Carroll. Beautiful pass there, and again, Britain just hanging back, just trying to work out what the Australians are going to do. They've done very well, you know, they farmed it away from the play-the-ball area so often. Very little running from dummy half by the green and golds. Look at that, for fifth tackle, they've made 84 metres with ball in hand. They're camped on the British line. And this is Kimoli who dabs it through. They've got another try, it is Willie Mason. He's not given it yet, he wants to check. But where did Willie Mason come from? Great Britain defence will be asking about this. Because he came from nowhere to touch that ball down. Neat little kick from Kimoli. Oh, there all, he is, he's oh. way back. Just no one at home. That's a try. T.R.Y. He'll just confirm it. No problem. Fingers the forearm, and it will go up on the screen, and the embarrassment continues. They caught Paul Wallens out there. He was very, very slow. The skill from Brett Kamali. The smile on Mason's face will now go even wider. That's his fifth try in International Rugby League. This is his 14th cap. He was man of the match in the grand final. It's raining in Elland Road as well tonight. And there are some players out there. We talked about the Australians wanting the end of this uh, long and arduous tour for them. There are some players there in red, white and blue who, if referee Russell Smith blew the final whistle now, there would be no complaints. Fitzgibbon then with the chance to add to his impressive goal-kicking reputation, and he doesn't miss those. They're through the 40-point barrier. It's 44-0. And don't expect the green and golds to lift their foot off the accelerator pedal. They'll be enjoying this. They will be wanting and hunting for more tries. The quality of the kick, the ease in which the big forward could just slide through under very, very poor pressure. They've got it back of Great Britain. Oh, and, well, he said that that went back. I think in a Super League match, Justin Harris would have been pulled back there for a, a knock-on. This is Paul Johnson. Well, the last thing we need is sympathy from the referee. If we're going to get back into this game and show some pride, 
then we have to do it with a skill and the quality. But we've got to sort it out. No one's taking control out there. This is Maguire. Danny Maguire. On your line. And Farrell. And Bailey. Look at the defence. They're leading by 44 points to nil, Australia. Well, Great Britain are running in with the ball carrier as though they're going to get tackled anyway. Oh, it could be a try here for Reardon. It will be as well. There could be a try for Reardon. <laughs> well, 44 nil, he goes to the video referee to check it. Well, I suppose in the spirit of the game, he has to. Well, of course, he, he, he has to see whether Minicello has actually defused the ball. Good option there. Yeah, well, fine. Sorry, not yeah. it, uh, Minicello, it's uh, Matt Singh. Now then, as Matt Singh defused the ball, no at that point, no at that point, so that's try. Reardon has brought a little ray of sunshine amongst the rain here at Ellen Road. Well, Stuart Reardon has come of age in this series. He began this year as a sub in the World Club Challenge against Penrith. He ends it with his fourth international trial. He's had a good series. Can't blame him, really. Not many opportunities has been an offer tonight for the two wingers, Carney and Reardon. But quick thinking by Danny Maguire. A lot of people surprised, myself included, that Maguire did not start the game. Quite a few eyebrows were raised when Houston Harris got the nod. It has not worked. Farrell with the conversion, and uh, he has missed. And uh, Stan Wall makes his way off the field. Now, one interesting fact about Stan is the last time that he was in the middle at Ellen Road, he actually was a referee in the 1985 Premiership Final. St Helens 36, Hull KR 16, Mal Meninga running in two tries. So, Stan Wall reliving a few memories here tonight, but... Uh, What's happened in the opening 50 minutes of this match, it'll be a nightmare for Stan and the rest of the British camp. Wellens will run the ball back for Great Britain. Well, it's only 40 points, Ian. Can we get back? Well, you talk about Stan. After that, we put him on as the kit man. He did such a good job for St. Helens. And uh, see, some of these Great Britain players have got to, you know... Eliminate the last 40 minutes and get back to how they did in the, in the tournament. They got some skill there, but it's the little parts of the game that are letting them down poorly. And even with that try, as much as we'd say Wellen might be out of position, but who turned at the same urgency that Willie Mason ran? And, and that's the problem. People around weren't helping, and that's what suffered. Mason come from a long way back, further than the defenders. We've we've talked throughout this Tri Nations though about the gap closing. Do you ever see? A time when the Australians, here's another kick that's straight into the arms of Minicello. Do you ever see a time when the Australians will not be the dominant force in the game? Because internationally, that is bad news. Well, keep in mind, Eddie, the previous five games, there was a maximum winning total by uh, Australia of six points when they won a game. And Great Britain did win the last one against him. So, look, you know, this in, in the last six games has been a one off. So, you know, but, let's but when not the get chips are down here, and look at this, Carroll. Tony Carroll. He must have run 20, 30 metres there, just bouncing the would-be tacklers off him. Here is Kimorley. And here goes Mason again. On your line, on your line. Craig Wing will wait at dummy half. And he'll find Lockyer, who changes the direction. Webke fumbles. They are human after all. I think the point you made earlier, Eddie, the worrying part, once again, is the, how easy it is for them to get out of their half and on the last tackle be in an attacking position to come up with an attacking play on the last tackle. But that's not surprising, Ian, when we keep kicking the ball down the throat of the full-back. We know our speed. And he gets into a good position, they get the roll on. We, we can't negate that. Could you imagine Minicello talking to his coach, where do you want me to stand, coach? Listen, just stand there, they'll kick it to you. <laughs> As the great Jack Gibson, you know, the guru of coaching in Australia would always say to his players, especially Peter Sterling, when they were playing at the famous Sydney cricket ground, he used to say, kick towards the seagulls, son. Kick where there's no one there. Here's Farrell, that's a good offload, Maguire. Oh, great ball from Maguire to Johnson. He bounces away from one. He's got support from Wellens. Carney wants it fed wide. It's a forward pass. It's a forward pass, says Russell Smith. And Carney's try is short. 
kicked off. Well, he's got it right, but that is the best movement that Great Britain have produced tonight. Johnson, the instigated, making... I've been critical about the second phase. No doubt about it, as far as I'm concerned. The mere fact that once Johnson was taken down, there was no chance of bringing into play the momentum rule. Feedback, Sean, get in. If looks could kill there, Brian Carney just had uh, a vicious look on his face at Russell Smith, but the international referee of 2004 certainly got it right, in a good position. Not that he's had much to do tonight, really, when you think about it. Most of the time he's been running and standing behind the post and pointing the finger. Yeah, it's got, it's got nothing whatsoever to do with the referee, this defeat. No. No question about that. None whatsoever. Although the first penalty that was given, they were back chatting, Britain, and uh, as I said at half-time, it, it went steadily downhill from that moment for some reason. And here's O'Mealy. Last tackle. Great wing. Five, five. Kimorley. Great kick. Turning Reardon around. Giving the chasers time. And Lockyer with a little bit of help from Fitzgibbon. Not only that, Eddie, it's it's raining. And when it rains, you know, it's it's not a secret. The ground gets wet and slippery. They don't kick it in the air, they put it on the ground. Common sense, and I'm afraid we have shown very little of that. They're trying their hearts out though, to be fair to them. Back. He's got to take your hat off to Shane Whippy. He's just come off the field. I'll just hold on here, Eddie, hoping that there's a break. But he just came off the field. He's limping, but he's jumped straight on a bike. Just try and say to the coach, listen, coach, I'm only off for a break. I want to come back on. Come back, good well, there's a kick that hit the ground and went backwards, and it's still the last. And there's the kick from Terry Newton that has gone over the far side and finds touch. But he's gone through a fitness test out in the field before kickoff. He's limped during the game. He's come off. He's got on a bike and said, "Listen, coach, don't make that my last appearance of the game. I want to be part of this great victory." And that probably typifies the way the Australians have been all night. <laughs> Fantastic, <laughs> Warrior. Just a minute, Steve. I think Chris warren has got some news on him. Well, just backing up what Ian's saying there, uh, one of his officials uh, in the in the corridor earlier on at halftime, he said to me, "This man is the, is the is the strongest character ever to play rugby league that's still drawing breath." It's a big comment. He certainly is a tough character. I think uh, Billy Johnson was saying that Coach Wayne Bennett wanted to pull him off and, and bring him off for good, uh, but uh, Webke ins insisted that he wants to go back on, and uh, that's why he's on the bike pedalling away, keeping that right right knee warm now. The point I was trying to make, Eddie, is that the, this man played at top level with a broken arm. Yes, he did. He just said, strap it up, I'll do my best. Mason again. See how he attracts two, three tacklers. Normally he would have gone for the quick play of the ball, but when you've got a score line at 44-4, there's no point. Just good position. This will be a neat, neat kick yet again. Webke stabs the kick all along the deck. It means Carney's got to get out of the in-goal area, and he cannot do. So Australia will have another set of six. It's a lesson. It's basic. It's a lesson in how to kick. It's basic. The kick chase. And you know, we only had one from Great Britain. And from it, and I mean the kick on the ground, created our only set, consecutive sets of six. But Ian Millwood, we see kicks like that week in, week out in Super League. Yeah, look, I know you're talking about the kick. Yeah, it's a lesson in kicking, but it's also a lesson how to build pressure. And unless you get the first right, you can't get the second right. Yeah, your kick's only as good as your chase. So I certainly have to agree with that. Well, he's trying to rally the troops. Is well, he will be bitterly, bitterly disappointed. He's not on his own, Eddie. No, there's 30 odd thousand in here, and about a couple of dozen on our team as well, but still, and millions around the country. And of course, the Australian Wallabies, having beaten England at Twickenham early today, maybe that was the worst possible result for this Tri Nations final because the Kangaroos did not want to be overshadowed by the Wallabies. Oh, look at this wing, brilliant. Mines. Good tackle from Maguire. It is a good tackle, and he didn't like it, didn't Berrigan. Wing again. Kimoli. 
pass to Marco Mealy. Britain trying to hold him out. And they do just about. One, two, three, four, five there. What about a long pass from Lockyer? Would what you about have a, a bet? long kick out wide from Lockyer? Or Kimoli? Here's Lockyer. There's the ball to Tony Carroll. Great hands. Minicello pulled down, though. Good tackle by Senior. Last one. Wing. Oh, Wing stabs the ball. That's poor. Poor kick. Well, a cheer from the partisan crowd mainly due to the fact that the Australians have come up with a poor effort in the end here's Morley he won't give it in either I think Bill's got some news from the British camp Paul Skelthorpe has been taken off obviously um, he started the second half in the dressing room he's come back out and he's now gone back to that uh, Great Britain dressing room and the word is that he has got a back problem in fact he's played through this Tri-Nation series with uh, a bit of a, a problem I think a continuation of the problem that he had all season, Ian Millwood might have uh, a view on that. Well, when Bill was giving the news about Paul Sculthorpe, uh, Ian looked to the heavens a little, so we will uh, have words about that maybe in a moment. But again, the kick from Britain is accepted gratefully by Australia. And here goes Andrew Ryan. And uh, senior in the end is the man who brings him down. That's a worry for you, Ian, about uh, Paul Sculthorpe. Yeah, I can say last week and, and this week he hasn't trained, but, you know, I don't want to take that as any reflection on Australia's performance. You know, they've been just dominant across the park. Paul has had it. When, when it does occur, it does linger for a few weeks for him. So, you know, the best thing for him now is rest. But, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, he's got an injury, but there's a few very sick and sorry boys out there with the, with the Great Britain team. Absolutely. Paul Skullthorpe hopefully will, like the rest of the team, find a, a beach to relax on over the next few weeks. Australia on the halfway line. And uh, injury there to Craig Wing, who plays it gingerly to Ryan. He finds Kimorley. Here is Lockyer. And look at the, even the, the pass that isn't precision round the ankles is still pouched by Berrigan. Here's Kimorley again. He looks up, dabs the ball over the top. Well picked up, though, by Wellens, who will lead the counter. First time that we've got that counter as well, taking the ball on the uh, half volley. We've got nothing to lose now. Let's show our skills. Don't let's just go into a shell. There are quality players that, oh, not when they do things like that. That was not the best from Stuart Fielden. Well, the we crowd have also, by the way, given their own version now on what's happening on the field because we've got one of those ridiculous Mexican waves going round the ground. Well, every time I'd, that happens, to be you, fair, get, you get the feeling that everyone's lost a bit of interest. No, not confirmed. <laughs> Having said that, Eddie, I think they want to do the amazing wave to try to keep warm because they certainly haven't been clapping. Well, they should do because it's a it's a breathtaking performance of rugby league skills that we're seeing from the men in green and gold again. Another penalty here. Another penalty from Russell Smith. He's not allowed to stand up. And he's got it right. You can see there's uh, pushing down. Wellens involved. Sheer frustration coming into the British camp. An absolute devastation written on the face of Brian Noble. So near before the kickoff, but we are very, very much far apart on tonight's performance. The green and gold have been superb. And that's Nathan Hindmarsh, he finds Badiris who flicks it to Lockyer, who finds Kim Morley. Kim Morley almost gets away from Maguire. 39 tries from Maguire in Leeds Colours this year, none so far in the international. Sivan Siva. But Maguire may be proving that he's not just a try scorer, he has more to offer than simply scoring tries. That's a gift. Well, now the Australians making uh, many mistakes. Perhaps just trying to force the ball a little bit too much. Where normally, if it had been a tight game, they'd have been going for that little kick through, trying to get the successive, successive set to six. But this defence from Australia, well, they've just snuffed out virtually everything that the British boys have thrown at them. Well, there was great uh, respect in the Australian camp in the week. Wayne Bennett talked about some of these players, Great Britain players, as 
world class and generally they are and they have proved to be throughout this tournament but sadly not tonight Long's kick and it's it's almost I'm, I'm with Ian Millwood I, Ian I think there's a magnet in that ball I think the Australians have got metal on their chest wait, wait, John, wait. I tell you what if you're a Great Britain supporter it's, I think it's going to get worse because I'm watching Australia off the ball at the moment and they're very intense and focused they want blood they've been very gracious with the Great Britain players during the week but hey they don't want a new kid on the block yet they still think they're the world champions and they're going to go for blood here Ian you know you did it to Leeds last year, Leeds did it to you. It's very difficult to stop a team that's on a roll, isn't it? Well, momentum's a huge thing in rugby league. At the moment, it's all their way. And the little things in the Great Britain game aren't right. So they're always going to get the upper hand here, Australia. Willy Tonga has knocked on. Well, they're trying to be a little bit too fancy. Australia, and no doubt Wayne Bennett has said, look, 44-4, go and enjoy yourself why not quality and the the skill factor that we've seen but let's not take away also the fact that this Australian forward pack they've completely dominated we've seen nothing of the likes of Field and Morley Peacock Farrell Skullthorpe we know is injured but we haven't made that penetration we haven't got over the advantage line here is Peacock credit Great Britain you know they are not turning this in it's Gleason. Oh, flick back by Newton, it's a good job, he got a fingertip to that, it's with Fielder now, and look at the defence, they just swarm around, Been the with the ball. Talking of defence, Tony Carroll has put his body on the line, some great defence, and very low. Maguire helps it on to Long, back it comes to Wellens, but... Telegraph. Federis was there and he anticipated that pass. O'Loughlin, Maguire kicked down the line, good kick, Minicello. But he doesn't go over the in goal line. And it's a Berrigan who steps out. Of, oh, a pinch! Farrell's pinched it. Ball on the bounce, Carly's wide on the right. This is Peacock. Looks around, no second phase. Newton, Maguire, Danny Maguire, Senior, Keith Senior over there. Maguire waits dummy half. Back it comes to Sean Long. Sean Long to Andy Farrell. Farrell was waiting for the tackle, it didn't come, it comes now. O'Loughlin, the dummy half. Straight up the middle. Now we need the second phase. Use at least two dummy runners. Do it. Change their tactics. Fielding couldn't get through. Pine Marsh was hanging on. Newton stabs the ball to the in-goal area, and there's nobody there. And the reason why no one was there because probably that guy, Terry Newton, was the only person that knew what he was going to do. Kick at number seven. Stand up. Yep. Number seven. Oh. Britain have got the ball back. Here is Martin Gleeson, whose reputation in this series has been immense. Ball stolen. Back to Play six. On. That should be back to six. This is Peacock. Now this is where Danny Maguire, he's got nothing to lose. Show his skill. Throw the dummy. Give it the step. Well, there's the dummy. And there's the dummy. And there's the step. And there he goes. There he goes. Newton, Gleeson, Gleeson, hauled down by Tony Carroll. Chance here for Newton, he's over. Has he got the ball down? The referee has a look and gives it to the video referee again. Wonderful skills by Danny Maguire. Having the opportunity. I'm not so sure he's got this down, Eddie. I don't think he has, he's still on the chest. Still on the chest of the defender. Went under. Kamali did ever so well, didn't he? Just grabbed the ball carrying arm. I don't think that's a try. I don't think that's no, I, don't, I don't think it was a given. Well, they often say benefit of the doubt. They will go for the attacking side, but 
I think Kamal has done everything right. Got the right knee underneath, twists it up, and as much as Newton tried, I don't think this will be given. You're going to need worm can to work that one out, aren't you? So, yeah, that's <laughs> where I, I'm, I'm conflicting with this benefit of the yeah. attacking team. Well, watch for the knee there. That's, and it looks to me as though the knee is still underneath. And what, what happens now as he comes up here, Newton, look where the ball is when he gets up. It's there. It's on the it's arm. On, it's on the arm and on the chest of Brett Kimmel. There's, there's still going to be a reward mechanism for the defender. That's why this uh, benefit of the doubt, I, I think it's... Well, the right, the right forearm of Newton is actually in the in-goal area, so it could be a try. It isn't. The tackle count will continue. Four tackles. Newton denied by the video referee. Now, this is where we have to set up. Sean Long is out wide. Maguire is calling for it. Should be a quick shift across. Terry Newton has to play the ball. He was held up over the line. Here is a Lachlan and Maguire and Long. And Long tries to go through a gap that wasn't there and loses it. And the Australian captain picks it up and he finds Andrew Ryan. Zero. O'Mealy. Oh. Well, he nearly, he nearly took, Mc, well, he did take Maguire off his feet and pushed him up about two or three metres in the air and back four. Chris, some news? Well, we've already seen the last of Luke Rooney, but uh, Craig Wing also, I think we've seen the last of. He's taken a heavy knock. He's having trouble seeing out of his left eye. I don't think we'll see him again. So it might be looking to, uh, the Aussies coasting on the scoreboard, but anything but down here. The Medico is certainly keeping busy. And as I said before, Shane Webke coming up with a Herculean effort on one leg. Berrigan was able to get up and uh, pass the ball, and this is Hindmarsh. And Britain can't put them down. Farrell does eventually. Wonderful player, isn't he, Nathan Hindmarsh? Gets through a lot of work, especially in defence, but uh, he goes looking for the football. Great ball again. Minicello, kick to turn Brian Carney round. Oh, and he finds Wellens. Wellens with work to do, and brilliantly does it. Good position there by Brian Carney, and, and look at that, he's looking for work. But even when they fall off the tackle, you know, there's always somebody there sweeping up. It's been a wonderful team effort. Wayne Bennett, the Australian coach, will be very proud of this. Well, be Australian, he says, and... Uh, and they have, they have been Australian, haven't they? Here's Farrell. Time last! Come on, Joe! Last Get tackle, and Britain on their own 20-metre line. And Maguire flicks it to Peacock. And there's, there's kicker number eight, I think. No, I think it's number ten. Well, We'd already had nine. Well, Ian said seven before. I, I don't wish to argue about numbers with you, Steve, because I know what you like. I've never seen so many different blokes kicking one game. That, that, that is, that, there's one word for that. Discipline. Frust yeah, and you frustration. Know, it's, it's and, frustration. And desperation. Oh. So you... You're agreeing with Steve-O now about the kicking game. Gee, I, I, I've got to say, I'm agreeing with you again, Steve-O. I, I apologise to everyone out there. Oh, he's up, he's up. Mason, Mason! Two, hands up! They're within striking distance again. Kimali, O'Mealy! Three, back on this! Badiris, Kimali, Lockyer. Whoa! Oh, that's the second mistake. Not happy with it, but he knows. Everyone knows here. Well, they won 5 0 against their name, don't they, the Aussies? I must say that Wayne Bennett's tactics tonight, also with the utilization of the combination of the two halves, has been quite superb. Brett Kamali being quite happy to take first receiver, farm the ball out to number six, Darren Lockyer. And it has worked a treat. Here's Keith Senior. Remember the moment at Wigan two weeks ago. It seems a million miles away at the moment, doesn't it? Well, I hate to say it, but uh, before a match was played in this country, I interviewed in London Brett Kamali, and I said, do you think it's going to be easy? And he said, it'll be tough until we get to the final. And like always, you poms will just fall apart. Ball's lost. It's stolen. 
Now we, we're talking about the halves here. You know, if you look at the reason why Australia's probably dominated the, probably the last 20 years, if you look at some of the standoffs, Fulton, Daly, Lewis, Kenny, Fiddler, if you look at all them and now Lockyer, Hopefully, Danny Maguire can be that next person that gives Great Britain the edge because he does have some attacking flair that those great players had. Well, the first person for a generation. We've searched and searched and searched for halfbacks. Yep. And we found, we found one. And what do we do? We don't select him. Well, hindsight's a wonderful thing. I know, really. but, you know, look, even the Australians realise the quality of this guy. I know that Brian went for tried and trusted, and he... He's been very faithful, and you've got to admire that. Do you honestly believe that had Maguire been at six, the story would have been any different? Probably not, but by the same token, he could have sparked something in the opening first three or four minutes that may have put a little bit of doubt in the Australian's mind. All throughout this game, we put very little doubt in the green and gold. You ask any of those great players, but what they need, they need a pack of forwards going forward in field position. And, and until tonight, strong. Britain have had that. Keep they have, you know, this is what we've got to keep in perspective. Don't this series hasn't been one-sided. There's been a team, a new kid on the block called Great Britain, have been the most dominant. But tonight, the Australian pack of forwards is completely dominated. Without what, what we, we perceive for the tournament, the strength, Great Britain's forwards. By the way, while we were chatting, we missed a very good kick from Great Britain that has produced the goal line dropout and is producing this repeat set of six. Good ball from Senior Wellens, just ankle tapped at the wrong moment. Referee says he wasn't tackled, that's why there's no penalty. Maguire, Gleeson, good feet. Good feet from Gleeson, but again, Hindmarsh with the tackle. Lachlan, and he is Peacock. Britain looking for some consolation here and you have to take your hats off them to be fair they haven't thrown the towel in it's been great defense well the Australians don't long. know back it comes to Farrell and Farrell out the back door to Morley and infield to Maguire and Maguire to Gleeson and Carney wants the ball down the line Gleeson takes the tackle Maguire picks up it's the last tackle Keep it Keep low, try to get five. another set. Well, O'Loughlin's gone high. And they're all after it, and they've got another set. Have they? No, no. it was diffused in goal. Great work there by Matt Singh. A lot of heavy traffic around him, and he just went up like the helicopter, and the blades, the rotary blades, just brushed everybody away. You mentioned at half-time, Steve-O, about the Australians. Look like they've got spiders all over them. That's the reason why Great Britain couldn't tackle them. I'll tell you one bloke in the Great Britain team has got spiders all over him, and that's Martin Gleeson. Every time he's touched the ball, he's beat the first person. Yep. He has had a very good game. And a great signing for Warrington, I, oh, I, I knew you'd throw that in, Eddie. I hate to keep on reminding him. <laughs> you won't have him next year. He's at Warrington in 2005. Uh, is that the rain coming down my face or uh, tears? <laughs> Look at Willie Mason still going as we enter the last 10 minutes of the season 2004. Memorable from, from start to finish. Memorable tonight, sadly for all the wrong reasons from a British point of view, but we have to just applaud what we have seen from the men from Australia. It has been some sensational stuff. And the Super League season, of course, was, was one to behold. It certainly has, and I must say that maybe the Australian media has helped this kangaroo side over here because Wayne Bennett and a lot of the players they've been criticized I think someone said it earlier in regards that they were not called the kangaroos they were being called the bronca ruse little bit harsh perhaps but when they've had to stand up and be counted boy oh boy they've done that fully deserved it approach play good solid work in the forwards oh, oh, he's he's gone. without it he dropped that he was always going to lose it wasn't he just has not been Adrian Morley's night. Well, he will have another season of torment in the NRL with the Roosters after this, won't he? He'd be a bit like you, Steve-O, but you are only lasting in Australia for, what, about three or four weeks by the time you get home after this? A little bit longer, Eduardo. Well, that will be news to the family back home. <laughs> you might be home for Christmas. Well, the you, thing, the thing, the thing if is... If you see someone in a red suit with a beard, it's your dad. <laughs> Here it's Tony Carroll. Well, it's usually, the, usually the man with the ball head. <laughs> this is Kimorley. And here is Sivanasiva. Sivanasiva still. They are looking for the 5-0 Australia. Just to really rub salt 
into this wound. It's with Lockyer. Great kick again. And Reardon just shovels it dead. It's all about that pressure, isn't it? it didn't have to be much finesse. Just make sure that the, the kick is superb. They've outkicked us. I said before the kickoff, as a lot of the British they fans, go, the they British go. Fans, there's, a, there's over 39,000 here, and the majority of them are British, but look over there in the far corner, that little sea of yellow wigs. They're all the Australians. Not too many of them here, but they will be the happiest bunch. And their celebrations, I think, started after about half an hour. I think the celebration started after about 10 minutes, to be fair. <laughs> Straight into Kimorley's arms, the ball. They head off to America next week, the Kangaroos, to play an exhibition match against the USA. It's 44-4 here. I wonder what that score will be. Brandon Costin, I think, is going to play for the USA. Julian O'Neill, the ex... Um, or is he still at Witness? I'm not sure. Is he one of the ones that Witness have retained? Anyway, Julian O'Neill of Witness last year. He will be there, I'm sure. Brandon Costin. And full credit to the Australians to, to be doing that. It's given a little bit of uh, prominence in the United States of America, but it's all about Britain at the moment. They have in, enjoyed themselves tonight. Here's Willie Mason. Sheer strength mixed with ability and the combination of the two halfbacks, Lockyer and Kamali, outstanding. Sivan Asiva, and that's the last, and uh, trapped in possession, it's the turnover. Actually, there will be a lot of people, Steve-O, saying now, and Ian, you know, the Australians have been moaning about too many matches, too long a season. Rare penalty for Great Britain here. They finish this six-week Tri nation stint, and the next thing is, they're off to America. Or well, maybe the Australians... Uh, sorry, the Great Britain team might say after this, they play more games than the Australians. We're the ones who should be fatigued. No, I think it's been great for rugby league. It's disappointing the games at the finish on this note because the expectation was high because the quality of the tournament. It's been a great tournament. It, it has. Yeah. It's fantastic. fantastic. It yeah. has. Yeah. It's, just, it's just we expect and hope yeah. and pray and someone up there ain't listening. Prayers will do you no good, Eddie, if you get just knocked about in the forward pack and you do not tackle. Allow a green and gold man to run give him plenty of space and he will just cut you apart can Great Britain just end the series on a positive note Farrell looking to offload and does in the end Maguire here now is Johnson Maguire again long and long sees a gap and the pass is straight to Badiris but he couldn't criticise Long there, he just knew he had to chance his arm. I suppose in many ways, if you look at the second half, Eddie, you know, the Australians are only leading 6-4. Oh, knock on by Berrigan. Yes, 6-4, it is second half. And it was 38-0 to half-time. It's, uh, it's very difficult, though, for any side to be sat in the locker room at half-time with a, a scoreline at 38-0. Difficult to motivate. There were worrying signs, Steve-O, in the last 10, 15 minutes last week. I know it was a dead rubber, yeah. but it was the Kiwis who finished the stronger. And yeah. there were a couple of worrying signs from a Great Britain point of view. And sadly, it's been transferred to Elland Road for this final. Well, I said at half-time, didn't I, that uh, Brian Noble admitted that they, there wasn't much bite there. And I'm afraid the Great Britain lads have been to the dentist because uh, they've been toothless. Here's Farrell. Release me. There's no lack of effort Wait. in the white jerseys. None whatsoever. They're just being outclassed, out outclassed by yeah. a much better side on the night. Yep. Long. Senior. Goes around Berrigan. Senior! As he's done all year, so close. Reardon, not the best. And Long hacks the ball forward. Now they, they still get out of jail, Willie Tonga. I thought maybe the boot just touched the whitewash there. Tony Carroll, Lachlan, oh, Lachlan flew in. Did he? Ooh, nearly. Wait, 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 wait. 
it was rather surprising that Tonga uh, didn't allow that ball to go dead in goal. Didn't want to take the risk. Just shy of three and a half minutes of the season remaining. And here, oh, a gift to Farrell, who finds a Lachlan, who finds Johnson, gives it to Maguire. It's now with Gleeson. As I say, if we score now, at least we can say that we've won the second half, but it's, it's pure consolation. We can't be kidded by this. This is Bailey. Oh, Lachlan. Not the best. Not the best from Australia either. They'll play the first knock on, which sadly came from that fellow in the Great Britain shirt. Well, Wayne Bennett, he knew that he was uh, staring at the abyss. The last Australian coach not to get the better of Great Britain was Harry Bath in 1972. And he has been at Brisbane the same time as Sir Alex Ferguson has been at Manchester United. And he has been equally as successful. Five premierships with the Broncos, seven State of Origin series for Queensland. World Club champions twice, 92 and 97. A bit of a barren spell since 2000 at club level, but the Tri-Nations trophy is heading off to Sydney, courtesy of Wayne Bennett and this class of 2004, the Kangaroos, who have done this all night, offloaded and, and played with great skill, great dexterity. And it's been a better performance by Britain in that second half, their defence has been a lot more intense. And as I say, you know, how can you salvage anything when it's 38-0 at half-time? O'Mealy. Now then, now we're going to have a little bit of spice in the final seconds of this game. Oh, Lockyer passed to a man on the deck who got it away to Badiris. It was the winger, Matt Singh, and Badiris' kick goes out on the fly. First time he's had pressure on him in the whole game. They come at the 79th minute mark. A bit late, Ian, you're right. Peacock for Britain. Last minute of the match. Can Great Britain just send the remaining supporters in this ground home happy? Oh, Lachlan. Oh, Lachlan, he's tried hard to be fair to him since he came on the field, the sub. Maguire. Gleeson. And Carney had been wanting that kick all the way through. And look at that. Tonga gets the ball away to Minicello. Minicello is trapped in goal. Oh, I wish we would have done that in the opening minutes. There's Wayne Bennett, the victorious Australian coach. Some great players led by a terrific character. An enigmatic figure in many ways in Australia. Doesn't speak much to the media down there, but he always has time for us, Steve Owen. It's a privilege for us to talk to him when he comes up here. And it's a always great to have him with us it certainly is and uh, I can actually remember playing against him when he played for Huddersfield a long long time ago I must say well Great Britain have got a penalty in the last minute and Ryan Bailey and Sivina Siva don't see eye to eye about something well we've got to go for broke because the next tackle it'll be all over so here they go this will be the last tackle of the season on Jamie Peacock he hits the deck it's all over. Australia have won by 44 points to four. On the night, sadly, Great Britain came up and were very, very short. And an heroic performance from Shane Webke. Played almost on one leg. He is limping his way onto the field to take part in the celebrations. And celebrations that will go on long into the Leeds night. And for Andy Farrell, Danny Maguire and the rest of the British team, another period of reflection on what might have been so often we have come up short at the final time of asking in an ashes series decider in a world cup final and now in a tri-nations final and great britain lose 
and uh, although it was 6-4 in the second half the match was lost really in the first 30 minutes and these players know that they certainly do and desperation inked on the players faces to be fair to Australia they realize the importance they have continued their dominance